Can the Pistons win one game? If they won one game, it would be a good series. The Pistons, who often this season, couldn't score 70 points. You know, truthfully, I don't think they're going to beat them because they have too much offensive, too many offensive people. Beat one of the biggest upsets in NBA Finals history. When the Detroit Pistons and Los Angeles Lakers took the floor for the 2004 NBA Finals, no one outside of the Motor City expected much of a contest. The Lakers, with a who's who of all-time greats and future Hall of Famers, were looking for their fourth championship in five years. Meanwhile, the Pistons' lone all-star was a defensive specialist averaging less than 10 points per game. But as a rugged and inspiring Pistons team was about to show us, that's why they play the games. As the 04 Finals ended up derailing one legendary team while immortalizing another. As the mini dynasty of the Bad Boys Pistons faded from memory, Detroit spent most of the 90s toiling in mediocrity. After winning two championships and advancing to five straight Eastern Conference Finals between 1986-87 and 1990-91, the Pistons failed to win a single playoff series over the next 10 years. During that time, Detroit averaged 39 wins per 82 regular season games and went 6-15 in 21 playoff games but the foundation of a future champion was being laid, just in an unpredictable roundabout way. The salvation of Detroit basketball was supposed to lie in the dynamic skill set of superstar forward Grant Hill, who the team selected third overall in the 1994 draft. The Pistons even acquired a young Jerry Stackhouse in 1997, setting up what looked like a dynamic duo of the future. But after five straight All-NBA selections and no postseason success to show for it, Hill sought greener pastures. Rather than losing him for nothing, the Pistons executed a 2000 sign-in trade that sent Hill to Orlando in exchange for a couple of undrafted late bloomers, guard Chucky Atkins and center Ben Wallace. Meanwhile, after averaging more than 22 points per game over five seasons as a Piston and teaming with Defensive Player of the Year Wallace to lead Detroit to the 2002 East Semis, Stackhouse was traded to Washington in a deal that brought fellow 20-point scorer Richard Rip Hamilton to Motown. Hamilton wasn't the only newcomer during that 2002 offseason, as the Pistons drafted versatile forward Tayshaun Prince 23rd overall and signed a journeyman guard named Chauncey Billups, who was joining his fifth team in only six years after being drafted third overall by Boston in 97. The moves paid off. Casey McGrady, Leos, Forces, With Wallace reaffirming his status as the league's best defensive player, Hamilton leading a balanced scoring effort, and Billups thriving as a full-time starter and suddenly elite shooter, the ragtag bunch won an East leading 50 games in their first season together and advanced all the way to the East Finals, where they were swept by Jason Kidd's Nets. Pistons great turned general manager Joe Dumars even won executive of the year, though the ensuing 03 offseason was a strange one. Dumars and head coach Rick Carlisle, who won 100 games, three playoff series, and a coach of the year award in only two years on the job, held a joint press conference to announce Carlisle's dismissal. Carlisle was then instantly replaced by coaching legend Larry Brown, who was still seeking his first NBA championship. Also that summer, the Pistons used the number two pick in a historically stacked draft class, a pick they acquired from Vancouver years earlier for Otis Thorpe, to select Darko Milicic, with Dwayne Wade, Carmelo Anthony, and Chris Bosh still on the board. Nevertheless, the Pistons suddenly entered the 2003-2004 season with championship aspirations, and Detroit looked the part of a contender through the first half of the season rattling off 13 straight wins at one point to bring their record to 29-13 in late January. Then the team hit an inexplicable wall, going 5-11 over the next month and stumbling through a six-game losing streak that had many wondering if this no-name team's luck had finally run out. Dumars had one more card up his sleeve, though. As part of a three-team deal with the Hawks and Celtics, the Pistons traded Atkins and Lindsey Hunter, among others, as well as future picks that turned into Josh Smith and Tony Allen for star big man Rasheed Wallace, whom Atlanta had only acquired from Portland 10 days earlier. 
As an intimidating power forward who could bang inside, stretch the floor, and defend, Wallace's talent was undeniable. But a long list of technical fouls, ejections, suspensions, and even some legal trouble wore out his welcome in Portland, where rightly or wrongly, he had become the face of a team known as the Jailblazers. In Detroit though, the then two-time All-Star fit like a glove, seamlessly acclimating to a team stocked with unheralded, hard-nosed players with chips on their shoulders the size of boulders. Before she got there, we was good. But when she came, we was great. You know, I think that was the final piece of the puzzle. After one-point losses in Rashid's first two games with the team, the Pistons finished the season on a 20-4 and tear to end up with 54 wins and the East's number three seed. Though a middling offense was a cause for concern, no one wanted to see Detroit's defense in the playoffs. From the time Rashid debuted through the end of the season, the Pistons' defense was more than 7 points per 100 possessions stingier than top-ranked San Antonio's D. A bigger gap than the one between the Spurs and the 16th-ranked Warriors during that time. That suffocating defense held up in the playoffs. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to the excitement of NBA playoff basketball as we get set for game one of round one between the Pistons and the Milwaukee Bucks. After easily dispatching of the sixth seeded Bucks in round one, the Pistons opened their East semifinal series against New Jersey by allowing just 56 points in a 22-point victory, and eventually rallied back from a 3-2 deficit to take the series in seven games. Though the Pistons lost game five of that series, the triple overtime thriller saw the making of the legend of Mr. Big Shot. And the lead is 88-85. Gotta get a three up. Pistons need a three, and they have just under three seconds to do it. Here's Chauncey Phillips. Here it is. He's got it. He's got it. Chauncey Phillips hits the three. Overtime. Amazing. Next up came a date with the top-seeded Pacers, now coached by Carlisle in the East Finals, which ended with a 69-65 win for Detroit in Game 6. That hellacious defense notwithstanding, what awaited the Pistons in the finals was supposed to be a different animal. The Lakers had added all-time greats Carl Malone and Gary Payton to the three-time championship duo of Shaquille O'Neal and Kobe Bryant. And despite season-long dysfunction, plus various injuries to Malone, Shaq, and Kobe, the Lakers had still cruised to 56 wins and a 12-5 playoff record. Though the Lakers and Pistons were separated by only two games in the standings, they may as well have had an entire ocean between them. These were supposed to be two teams on two different planets. That turned out to be the case, just not the way anyone envisioned, as it was the relentless Pistons who made quick work of their aging and feuding counterparts. The only reason the series didn't end in a sweep was because Kobe hit a late jumper to send Game 2 to overtime. Otherwise, Detroit's four wins came by an average margin of victory of 13.3 points, with an 88-68 Game 3 win especially stunning. 68 is a great score, if you're playing golf, mocked Jay Leno in his Tonight Show monologue the following night. In a series that featured a handful of future Hall of Famers, it was Billups, still two years away from even making an all-star appearance, who took home the unlikeliest of finals MVP awards. Though the Pistons never won another title, the legacy of that core, Billups, Hamilton, Prince, and the two Wallaces, lives on. In pulling off one of the biggest upsets in finals history, the 2004 Pistons finished the postseason with the lowest defensive rating of any playoff team in history, minimum five games played. Months later, the NBA overhauled its defensive rules to encourage more scoring. That bruising, intimidating core also advanced all the way to Game 7 of the 2005 Finals and made another three Conference Finals appearances in 2006, 2007, and 2008, with Chris Webber and Antonio McDice replacing Big Ben in the latter two of those runs, after Wallace had won a record four Defensive Player of the Year awards as a Piston. On the other side, the humiliating finals defeat proved to be the death knell of a dynasty for the Lakers, as head coach Phil Jackson stepped aside, albeit for only one year, while Shaq was traded to Miami, where he would help eliminate the Pistons en route to the 2006 championship a year after losing to Detroit again in the East Finals. 
After being patched together among the ruins of failed Pistons teams before them, the unlikely cast of characters that made up the 2004 Pistons changed the course of NBA history. Thanks for watching. If you liked this video and want to see more content like this, be sure to hit that subscribe button.